Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today we are talking about Hyperland. Now, a lot of you may be aware that I am doing a month on Kashi OS this month. And one of the reasons for doing so is I wanted to try out Hyperland. And Hyperland is one of the Windows managers that comes with Kashi OS. And uh, this is Hyperland. It's a tiling window manager. And I've seen lots of YouTubers use different tiling window managers like Awesome or DWM. And I wanted to try one out for myself. I've never used one up until this week and I wasn't sure how I'd get on and I and the reason I'm doing this is some of you may be tempted as a Linux user that's been doing it for some time to try this out and I wanted to see what sort of pitfalls you, you're looking for and whether is it going to work for the majority of people or is it a niche thing that really is for tech heads so this is what you get with Kashi out of the box you can see here I've got two desktops open so on my first desktop you can see I've got OBS studio running and then if I go to my second desktop um, you've got the blank screen that I'm showing here and across here you've got a calendar um, you've got the temperature you've got a file system box um, you've got um, how much memory is being used and you've got the volume control and I've got a Wi-Fi network thing here and the ability to log out so um, the first thing is, how do you run programs? Now, everything in Hyperland is keyboard controlled. So within Kashi, um, what you have to do is press the super key on your keyboard and the space bar. And it comes with this tool called Rofi. So if I do that, you can now see I can run a command. So for instance, if I want to run VLC, I can do that. And now if I press return, VLC will open. And you'll see that it opens across the whole screen. Now, in traditional desktop environments and using traditional window managers, if I opened another window, it would open over the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, and I am going to type Tuna because I've got Tuna installed. That's for another video. And I'm going to press return on that. And you can see it doesn't tile over the top. It comes in next to it. So if I do another program here, and for, say, um, I type... Firefox, and I press return here. You can see Firefox opens in the bottom right corner. Now you can use the mouse to go through all of the windows. So you can, like I could open a file here and it will work and it will play in that video and I can switch between the windows using my mouse. But the beauty of this tiling window manager is that it's keyboard driven. So once you learn the keyboard shortcuts, you can um, get to each window quite easily. So everything here is controlled by the super key. So if I press the Windows key and right, you can see it goes to the bottom window. If I press the up arrow, it goes to the top one and left goes to the bottom one like that. If I want to... And you can move the windows around by holding down the shift key like this. And if I hold down the shift key and three for instance and now you can see I've got number three up the top so I can go there my VLC is now moved to the third workspace if I want to close down any windows at any point in time I can press the windows and Q like that and if I want the Firefox to take up the entire screen so say for instance I had this and I had tuna running again I can make my Firefox full screen by pressing the super key and the F and that makes it full screen and you can use the whole real estate and I can toggle it back off to get it back to the normal size. I can resize windows so if I want the one on the right to be larger than the one on the left I press the windows and R and now I can 
shift it to the left like this, making the one on the left a lot smaller and giving more real estate to the one on the right. So from the outset, the beauty of this Titling Window Manager is that when you've got a normal overlapping window manager that you'd get um, for Windows or Ubuntu or Linux Mint on things like Cinnamon and Gnome, the windows overlap and you have to snap them to the right or snap them to the left to get them to line up. So this is great if you do a lot of comparisons or you need to read something from the left side and, and start typing into the right. So say you're following a tutorial on Firefox here and you need to type something into the terminal on the left hand side, then you can read the, uh, the, the text on the right, you can go over to your thing on the left and you can type in the commands. So here we are back at a blank screen and I'm going to show you the config settings for Hyperland because once you learn the config settings you can then add in your own key controls and you can understand how it all fits together and you can see how I've changed my background here and you can see this bar up here and you can understand how that all fits together. So it is terminal based what you need to do here. So um, to open up a terminal it's Windows and Enter on Kashi. Now what I'm going to say now is that the configs are different across distributions and I've got Hyperland on Ubuntu on my Raspberry Pi and the config settings on Ubuntu are far more basic than the ones you get with Kashi and I'll show you what I mean now. So what you've got to do is you've got to CD into your config folder and then there's a hyper folder and then there's another config folder there. If I type ls you'll see you've got all these comps here. But if I go back up a folder, you can see there's this hyperland.conf and that's your main config file and you'll get that whichever distribution you are using. Uh, but what I like about the way Cache have done it is that this then references configs further down. So I'm going to nano into hyperland.conf and you can see um, it's really nicely broken down. They've got headings, so you can see which key is your super key, which key is the key that does things. So on by setting it to super, it's the Windows key on my keyboard, but I could set that to the control key, I can set it to the space bar, I could set it to any other key on the keyboard, but super is a good key to use because it's very rarely used for anything else. And then you've got all these other config files. Now, like I said, if you're using Ubuntu or another distribution, you might just have all the config in one file, but um, basically anything that's in these configs will be in that main one file. But the, I really like the way Kashi have broken it down into separate um, config files. Um, so we're going to exit out of that. Uh, so it's Control X to get out of Nano. And if we go into the config folder, uh, and we'll start off with the auto start file. And you can see this is how I set my wallpaper. Uh, so the in Kashi, this is already set up. So you've got this sway background, minus so. In other distributions, you might not have this set up. You might have to set something up and have, and basically this exec once can execute any sort of thing. So if you had nitrogen as the background thing, you could probably use nitrogen to set the wallpaper. And all I've done is pointed it to a folder on my computer and I've used the word fill, so it fills up the entire background. Now all the other things here, so way bar is this bar across the top here. Um, so that's what that is. Um, I'm not sure what FCITX is or Maco, but NM applet is something I installed and that's what gives you your Wi-Fi indicator in the top right corner. And then you've got some of these other things here. Um, so you've got your authentication um, and you can add in different things for when Hyperland starts. Again, control X to get out of Nano. And what we'll do is we'll look at key binds because this is probably the most important for you as a user. If you go into key binds, um, you can see these are, whatever, these are the binders of what everything does. So for instance, you've got your defaults conf here. So if I come out and I nano into defaults.conf, you can see these are your default applications. So my file manager is Thuna, App launcher is Rofi, the terminal is Alacrity, and I really like Alacrity. I like the way it 
um, reads ahead on the command line uh, and then you've got other things here so you've got your capturing tool which is grim but if we go back into the key bindings if I press main mod and return or the enter key um, you can see it opens your preferred terminal so if I press that now I've got another terminal window open there um, main mod and E opens your file manager and you saw that was tuna so if I do that you'll see that will open down in the bottom corner if I want to do a screen capture I can do that with the windows and A key if I want to close a window so if I want to close tuna here I can do windows and Q now uh, window shift and M is going to exit hyperland so I'm not going to do that for obvious reasons now uh, you can switch a window so you've got this window here uh, so if I take this terminal window I'm in here I can switch it to be a floating window as opposed to a tiling window like that and now it's floating over the top of the other windows the, the windows and space key that runs my application launcher which we know is Rofi which is this thing here and you can run if you know what your programs are called you can run it so if I wanted LibreOffice say I can just type that and it will run LibreOffice. We've seen before uh, Windows and F will make it full screen. Uh, Windows and J toggles the current window split mode, toggle split mode. I'm not sure what that does, but uh, I like opening a different program. I don't want to change my do things whilst I'm in the settings thing because it does something silly. But if I do, all oh, right, so it, now a horizontal split as opposed to a vertical split. And if I do that, it makes it a vertical split again. Uh, windows and K toggles current window group. So you can group and ungroup windows together. Now, some of these down here I've set myself. Uh, if you've got audio buttons on your keyboard, it will say XF86 volume up and volume down. I don't have that on my keyboard. Um, so I set it to um, F8. So it's the main mod F8 is volume up and main mod F7 is volume down and F9 is mute and then down here we've got playback control for playing previous next etc and you've got brightness controls again I haven't got these on my keyboard I'm, I'm not actually using those at all and main mod L locks the screen and main mod O restarts waybar so um, as you've seen earlier you can do things with the window so I'm on the right window if I want to move that to the left I can hold the Windows key shift and left and then that moves to the left and I can move it to the right and you can move up and down if it's horizontal you've seen that we can resize a window if we hold the <laughs> it starts becoming a bit like twister when you get down to here so um, control shift window if I press the left you can see it makes that larger and I can go right and it makes it smaller and I can go up and down if it was horizontal um, and you can use the H, K and J as well if you want to and if I just press uh, control, win and a number it will move it to that workspace as mentioned before so these are all the keyboard controls and you can add your own ones in you can see um, under additional settings I've added my own one in so if I use main mod and the G it's going to run Google Chrome so the syntax is the super key you want to use, the key that goes with super key, and then it's a description, or what's it gonna do? Exec is that it's gonna exec the command, and then you've got Google Chrome Stable, which is the name of the program. So if I press Windows in G, you can see Chrome opens in the bottom right corner, like that. I'm gonna exit out of the key bindings, and I'm gonna shift to the little, and go over to this one, and I'm gonna close it. So we've got full screen again, I'm going to ls, and let's have a look at some of the other things. So if we do nano colors, you can change screen colors. Um, and you see there's all these wikis here that you can follow. And there you can see I've got that open up in the top like that. And it's going to go to that wiki page, is it? And yes, it does. And so you can 
read all about the um, bindings you can have. So obviously you'd make this full screen, not this one. This one, and then you can read everything you need to know about Hyperland. So there's Hyperland.org, wiki.hyperland.org is where you want to go, and you've got all these things that you can learn about Hyperland. And I'm only really touching the surface here. I'm, I'm showing you some of the features of Hyperland and the things I think are good. For me, the main ones you're, you're likely to change is the auto start and the key bindings. But like I said before, if you're using something like Ubuntu, you're probably not going to have that. You're just going to have this hyperland.conf file and that's what you're going to be um, editing and everything's going to be in that one file. So a few recommendations. Don't have Hyperland as your only desktop environment or window manager installed on your computer. Make sure you've got something else installed. Um, so I've got um, installed on here. I've also got Cosmic. Um, which is also Wayland based for Kashi. Um, um, but I've also installed XFCE, which is X11 based. I've got problems with Kashi where um, OBS will work with Wayland, but I have to run a command first. Um, but my Audacity isn't working with Wayland. So if I want to use Audacity, I'm having to use the X11 desktop uh, and therefore XFCE. That seems to be a problem I've got with Kashi, and that will be in my review of Kashi at the end of the month. Um, I've tried fixing it, can't come up with a solution yet. If I do find a solution, I will let you know about it. So yeah, I totally recommend having another window manager or desktop environment as a backup because you might need to edit the config of Hyperland in one of those it, um, desktop environments if you break it. Uh, something I have noticed occasionally, if I use the super key, it will go missing, so it won't do anything. and. It's, it could be a setting on my keyboard that locks it so that the wind key doesn't work anymore, but suddenly you get to a point where you can't open the terminal, can't open the menu and stuff like that. That's a little bit uh, dodgy from my point of view, but obviously having the other desktop environment means I can still do what I want to do. All in all, I really like the way this works. I didn't know if I would when I started, but it's really easy to get going. And once you learn the keyboard shortcuts, you can run whatever you want to do. I mean, how many programs do you really use on a daily basis? So if I want to run Caden Live, I can do that. LibreOffice, um, Evolution I've got installed. I just As long as you know roughly what the name of the program is, um, you're good to go. Obviously, most of my memory is being used by OBS, but I'm currently running about one gigabyte um, out of the 12 available to me. So it's it's lightweight. Um, without OBS running, it would be uh, probably about six, 700 um, megabytes. It's So it's a lightweight way of running. And uh, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by Hyperland. And I, th I think it's something I might use um, on personally going forward. Uh, I won't obviously use it in all my videos because I don't think everyone's going to be accustomed to it. But I can on honestly see myself getting to grips with it and making it part of my daily workflow. And uh, yes, I really, really enjoyed using Hyperland. Well, that's the end of the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.